Hello everyone, welcome to Ilian in the Magic Box. Today on our show, we're going to have Jay. Jay is from England in the UK. So let's see what Jay has to say. Enjoy the interview. Well, hello Jay, how are you? Pretty good. So tell me, how was your day today? Day today was great. I, uh, I got up this morning, I went for a run, I had a sauna. Uh, I played poker for a few hours. Um, I made a really nice lunch. Tuna, salad y, pasta y stuff. That was good. Wow. Um, just got back from the gym. I just smashed my next thing of food before jo joining this call. So. <laughs> so tell me where are you from, Jay? Where am I from? Complicated ones for me to answer. So, I mean, I'm half French, I'm half I'm half British. Mm -hmm. so I've got a French father, British French father, and a British mother. Um, I grew up where I am right here, right now, in the French Alps, most of my childhood. Okay. Um, but I then went and finished, did school and university and a bit of a career in the UK. So uh, I spent a lot of time in London and Manchester. And then my career took me all sorts of interesting places as well. So um, uh, I, th this is as close to what I would call as my home or my hometown um, here in the middle of the French Alps. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> and so you, some of your life you lived in the UK and some of your life you, you lived in, the, in France as well, in France. So I've, I've lived all around the world um, over the last while. So but principally, between London, the various parts of the US, and mm -hmm. then the, but parts of Europe as well. So I see. Yeah. And why is that? Why is you had the opportunity to live in different countries? So um, I had for a long time a very serious career in technology. Oh wow! And uh, I my project for a good God, nearly fifteen years was either finding a small fledgling uh, software technology in the UK or in Europe that okay. wanted to expand to the US, or I'd find a curious US technology company that wanted to expand into Europe, and I would be somewhere, either one of those projects would be building and growing teams in one, of the, one or both of those locations at the same time. I see. So, so and was, yeah, go on. yeah, carry on. Sorry, I was, I was, so I was really lucky to spend some some really good spells in New York and Chicago and Austin, yeah, uh, all of which I loved, um, and then London, Paris, quite a bit of time in uh, Geneva as well. Oh, and right now, are you still in the same uh, in the same business or not? No. <laughs> I, uh, I, I threw my job in my my job, my career. They kind of tapered off at the same point. I decided I wasn't going to go and do the next project a little bit more than a year ago. Okay. Um, I'm what well, I'm going to be 42 in a few weeks. So just turn just after turn, not long after turning 40, and I just decided I'd had enough. I didn't want to do this anymore. So uh, I quit my job. I rented out my London flat and then I just went off traveling and I spent my first stint was spending six months in Mexico. Oh, wow. So I, I spent last Christmas, New Year through to, through to early parts of the year going coast to coast for, um, from Pacific to the Atlantic across Mexico, getting into some wild adventures. Amazing, amazing. Actually, you mentioned that your birthday is in a few weeks' time. It's in November. It's December December the 1st. Oh, I see. Close. Coming up. <laughs> amazing. Okay, so during the interview, I'm going to explore a little bit more about your adventures and also about uh, your life so far, okay? Sure. Jay, before we start our journey within the Magic Box, would you like you to tell me something interesting about yourself or maybe something that not many people know about you? something that not many people know about me okay so i mean uh, so we've connected through social media recently yeah. 
So uh, I suppose um, what is what I've just was describing to you about my previous life is probably the the thing that no one is, is no one through in that field is really aware of. But I suppose what brought me into kind of this period of my life was. It was all of the same characteristics about myself that I really love, which is curiosity, adventure, meeting people. Um, I'm a really high energy individual, so I'm just I'm always doing things and I'm always kind of getting into all sorts of adventures in that respect. And I suppose this last year has been me figuring out for the first time in a long time, not employed as to how I'm going to going to apply myself and make all of those things make sense. So, uh, so yeah, so I've been spending over the last year, I've been developing. So I, I do some paid content through online, which yeah. you can ask me about if you want to, it's not a problem. Okay. Uh, but I also, I'm a semi professional well, I'll say I'm a part-time professional poker player. Oh, wow. And uh, and a few other kind of mini projects. I'm always coming up with interesting side hustles and things that take my interest based on where I might be in the world or who I might meet uh, at any one time that thinks, oh, okay, well, let's go and give this a try for a little while. Amazing. That's what I call an adventure person. I know exactly yes. what. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Jay, are you ready to go on a beautiful journey through your memories in life and share your point of views? Ooh, yeah, okay, sure, why not? Amazing, welcome to William and the Magic Box. <laughs> so I have here my best friend. Full of random fun questions, okay? I'm mm -hmm. just gonna play a song just for us to relax before the first question, okay? Okay. Let's do it. Okay, so before we start the game, during the join, if it comes up a question that you don't want to answer, don't want to talk about, always can change, okay? Sure. First question for you is, do you think your priorities have changed since you're younger? Yeah, I would say an awful lot. I mean, when I was... I, I started working, I started my, my job, job type job quite young, so mm -hmm. 18, 19, and it was quite a commercially corporate driven kind of environment. Um, so I think for a long time, my priorities had been build a life and acquire stuff and prove to my parents that I don't need my, they, I don't need their help anymore, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, so the, the things I was describing to you a little bit a few moments ago is I've, I've been on a very recent and very strong tangent in a different direction, which is very much about more interpersonal and more spiritual experiences than any of those other things that I used to kind of thrive in and work towards, I suppose. Wow. And when was the moment that you somehow this, you know, let's say this uh, new journey started as in spirituality? There was something that happened or just felt like that was something interested about? So I suppose it had always been like a, a yearning in the back of my head for a number of years, which was, you know, I, I don't want to do this forever. Um, the type of projects, the type of work projects that I used to have were incredibly intense so small startup technology companies um you know working hugely long hours different corners of the globe all of that kind of stuff so i always was aware that there was a bit of a shelf life in having that kind of lifestyle um but i suppose a few things uh, one and the, the one other interesting thing was that the life cycle of my job was always the same or at least of a work project so I would join a, a, a company or a, a small business, we'd build it up, we'd get acquired by another business, and I would always be the first person to get fired after the acquisition. Because right. I'm not the type of person that fits into a big company, I'm just a little bit different. Let's see. So over, what, over 12 years, so yeah, I took three, four companies, 
to to that moment, which is very exciting. Um, and then it's kind of a big kind of pause for breath and uh, take a bit of a holiday. Um, but this one just hasn't stopped. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Next question. Let's do it. Yes. Hey, Jay. Next question is, what is something you wish you could do every single day? Something I wish I could do every single day. I mean, so the lot of things that I do cherish doing every single day that I do already do, and mm -hmm. that's part of the wonderfulness that is my life over the last year. Um, so those things would be cooking some night like, cooking something really nice and exciting because i'm very creative in the kitchen i love to exercise um it's been a part it's been quite a big transformation journey for me this last year in terms of my own physical and mental health has been quite an interesting an interesting journey um things that i'm not doing at the moment that i wish i could do every day um, I've been without a partner for quite a long time. Miss morning cuddles quite a lot. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I'm also incredibly difficult. So uh, <laughs> at the same time. So <laughs> Talking about that, one person should go on a date with you. What this person must have? Oof. So I get asked this question a lot, actually. Um, and it's not about types it's certainly not about physical types and things like that um mm -hmm. for me it has to, there has to be energy and excitement about them because if you can't keep up or i've got to slow down that's, that's just yeah um there's got to be lots and lots of positivity and happiness or a cheekiness is certainly something that i really really like um i am naturally a very dominant uh person to to be to be seeing uh so someone that is oh the uh, so not it's not necessarily a, a requirement but it's always really interesting to take a partner on a journey right and that i really enjoy um but having the space for 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 those those personalities to fit i suppose amazing the message out there <laughs> <laughs> Next question, let's do it. Before the next question, Jay, um, you know, having parents from different nationalities, uh, like have your mom is French and your dad is English, did you kind of uh, grow up having both languages? And tell me uh, through your experience, what's the, 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 the positive side of having, you know, two parents from different countries and what's the downside, if there is any, in your opinion? Sure. So, I mean, uh, I was brought up speaking French to my father and speaking English to my mother. So the, the challenge that I actually had when I was a bit longer is, is it actually made me a bit slow when I was younger because I was trying okay. to digest. So there's a lot to digest when you're young. It's quite common with kids that are raised bilingual. Yeah. Um, but my parents, all everyone in my family is a teacher everyone every member of my immediate family my brother my brother's wife every, everyone so i can't escape it at all anyway um so there's that um i suppose what interesting experiences besides that whenever i'm in france i'm a roast beef and whenever i'm in the uk i'm a bloody frog so and actually it's quite an interesting one because it is fairly reflective of my personality a little bit which is i really quite like a, or i'm very comfortable going against the grain or going going upstream as it were um in a crowd i don't know whether that's directly affected some of those things but it's certainly something that i'm aware of is just i'm quite happy to um, have the other team's flag in a crowd because it's just it's fun and I like to, I like to people a little bit I suppose. Um, benefits so you know, I've been very lucky in that I've been able to travel and it's, and I've got two very quite different but quite strong cultures in my life. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I have f- family here in France. I have family in the UK as well. Uh, so that's always been quite been quite exciting and interesting. Um, and I suppose I, I think that's also one of those things that's led me a little bit towards the type of life that I lead, which is uh, always exploring and doing new things. <laughs> Look your face, exploring new things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get there in a moment, okay? I'm just, I'm just teasing you. I'm just teasing you. Which person in your family you, you're you are more close right now that you feel more connected with at the moment? Sure. So I've always had a particularly strong relationship with my father. Mm-hmm. Uh, my parents divorced when we were quite young. Ten, yeah. I was about ten, eleven. Okay. Yeah. And uh, my father was was a long way away uh, for for quite a while after that. And so uh, one of the things that we did as I was growing up was he was my fencing coach. Oh, wow. So so briefly as a teenager, um, when I was uh, doing GCSEs and A-levels in the UK, I was was a a champion epist. Oh wow! By virtue of my dad's coaching, um, and that was that was not having a lot of my dad around when I was small. Uh, when I was young, it hurt me. It hurt me quite a lot, and I was quite aware of it. And it was just one of those things that I'm so grateful because he made a lot of effort, huge amount of effort, to create Beautiful. that time and that space for us to do something that we both enjoyed. So that was great. Um, but yeah, I mean that that's been my, my father's always been the most solid, reliable, you know, member of anyone that I know. So it's uh, I'm very lucky well, in that respect. Okay, so your dad is watching this interview right now and have a moment, an opportunity to send him a message right now. What would you say he's watching? Uh, I, I I have this type of conversation I suppose with my dad quite a lot over the over the last few months. But yeah, I mean he would know that. Um, he's the one that I absolutely would rely on um, in any and all situations. Um, he's he's the, the mentor that I've always had my entire life, and I'm I'm very grateful. Oh, sweet, beautiful. <laughs> Next question is: What's your idea of a perfect day? Perfect day. Um, so dangerous slightly repeating myself i suppose but i'll try and take a slight some slightly different angles on it mm-hmm. um perfect day so you know, we talked about um, morning cuddles that is one of my quite important routines that i don't have at the moment and i, I don't it's not it's not a sexual thing it's an mm-hmm. intimacy thing for me yeah yep. it's one of the things that i really particularly enjoy is wasting time in bed talking and all of that kind of wasting the day, but not wasting it kind of stuff. Um, other things that I would particularly enjoy. So I, I, I do a lot of motorbiking at the moment. So, okay. uh, a, you know, really good day has probably got a bike ride somewhere interesting. Um, there's lots of lovely hills and mountains to go up around here. Uh, so when the weather's fine, that's really quite special. Um, and what else? I think, you know, I suppose those are two two things that I most value in a in a good day. Amazing. Okay. Next question. Let's do it. All right. Next question is Do you have any pet peeves? Pet peeves. Yes. I really hate when people make me repeat myself. <laughs> Can you repeat again, please? I really hate it when people make me repeat myself. I didn't get it. <laughs> I really <laughs> hate it when... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, um, the big, that's the biggest one. Yeah, uh, so, that, so that's a, kind of my interpersonal pet peeve. Mm-hmm. The, I had a conversation with someone recently about this a little while back. It's not necessarily a peeve, but a fear. And it's a really weird one. Um, one of the things that I've most consistently identified that I've been afraid of through my life is having a fear of missing out on something. Good point. Good point. Doesn't really matter what it is, but if there is an opportunity that's closed, 
I beat myself up about it horribly for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and you've always been this way, or it's just some moments? Always. In your... Yeah, always. Okay. always. Yeah. It, wow. I, I mean, one of my earlier memories was when we were young kids. Um, we had, I think we had cousins or whatever visiting, and we were all going to go to the swimming pool for, for the afternoon or the evening or whatever. And I fell asleep. Oh. And my mother thought I was looking so adorable that she didn't want to wake me, so everyone went without me. And I kind of woke up whilst they were miles away, and I just sat and stropped. And that was, I must have been like five or six. And uh, and many other examples of a similar thought process going on. It's been following you somehow. There's like a karma. Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> Jay, when you think about yourself, when you analyze yourself, what's the biggest joy of being you? What do you like the most about being Jay? So, and I, I've had this maybe a appraisal view from from a few few of my partners over the years and it's something i've really come to realize is that so i'm really good with people uh whether it's you know cracking wise or being quite bold in an uncomfortable situation or any of those types of things cuddling yeah yeah but um it was more just like so we'd be doing some grocery shopping and yeah. I would cheer up some lady's day just, but just, she'd, be, she'd be serving our groceries or whatever. And, and I'd just, I'd, I'd say things that weren't, weren't kind of common or normal um, that would, would, bright, would have the ability to brighten up a person's day. Um, and I should be doing that a little bit with, with some of the, some of the, the, the social media stuff I've been doing recently as well. But yeah, so I suppose, yeah, the thing that I'm really grateful for, and it's the tough stuff that I went through when I was a kid that made it, is mm -hmm. that resilient confidence going into a new situation or a new environment and thinking it was the worst that could happen. Let's see what this person's all about. I, uh, I believe you are a star sign in Sagittarius, isn't it? Correct. I'll tell you something now. Actually, my, I'm, I'm Scorpio this month. Okay. Uh, my second one is Sagittarius. Do you know the biggest characteristic of Sagittarius compared to the other star signs? Do you know on. the biggest one? On. I'll tell you now. Sagittarius, they have the biggest heart compared to the other <laughs> star signs. Yeah? Yeah, maybe. They, they do, and um, it's something about them. And actually, my first boyfriend was Sagittarius, actually. And uh, he, it's um, it's something about uh, it, it, you just describe everything you just you just said now. It's something about you know, uh, pay attention to people's you know routine or whatever it's happening. And you are always aware, you know what I mean. Oh. I think that's it's uh, it's a thing. It, it says everything. So yeah, there you go. Biggest heart. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Three questions left. Let's do it. Okay. okay, so before the next question, let's talk about um, your page. So, um, it's okay to okay talk about Yeah, Jay. You're right. Oh, of course, we can talk about it. So tell me when the idea came along for you to create uh, more spicy content on social media. Sure. So um, I actually briefly, when I was 18, uh, back in the days before any of these platforms existed, I had three or four encounters making uh, produced content before. Okay. Uh, and uh, it was something that I really enjoyed. I, I basically, I, I spent a little bit of time in a like, very brief amount of time in London when I was, well, 18, 19, modeling. Uh, did, I wasn't really enjoying it. It's not a very nice, from my perspective, a nice environment or industry to be involved in. Got involved in doing a handful of movies. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my career and work started picking up. So I, I had to quietly disassociate and bury, my, bury any of those experiences from, from that, that professional experience. And one of the things that I said to myself a year or so ago was, 
Now that I don't have either corporate or highly digitally astute colleagues that I would be looking over my shoulder, um, and I have the freedom to do whatever the hell I want, what would you like to do? And one of the things, those things is very obviously to express myself sexually, uh, mm -hmm. to um, show the type of person I am as a, as a, as a sexual being, I suppose, and be able to express that very, very freely. But just I've not have kept into very private circles, you know, before. I see. Okay. Now the whole world is knowing that now. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Next question. Okay, tough question now. If your plane was going down and uh -huh. you could just one person to say goodbye, which person that would be and why? Just one person that I could call to say goodbye. Um, so, I mean, I talked a lot about my dad. Um, and I, that's probably the answer that I would give, but actually probably just for the spirit of being a little bit, um, giving some, some variety in my answers. Um, I, have, I, have a, I have an older brother. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Uh, and he and I are the most incredibly similar, but totally different people in the whole world. Um, we grew up together. He's a little bit older than me. We're both incredibly competitive and all of the stuff that goes on between young lads growing up together, all of that kind of stuff. Um, so we have a lot of things that are very similar, but our lives are completely different. He's, he's also a teacher. Uh, <laughs> but... <laughs> Married and kids and all of that kind of stuff. So um, I suppose, yeah, I, I have a very strong connection with him as well, but it's based on actually what's incredibly different about us. Um, so he will be the one. He'll be the one. Yeah. And he lives in, in the UK. He in the UK or he lives he's in, in the UK? Yeah, he's got a he's got an English wife and a pair of twins. So, you know. Oh, my God. Sweet. Uh, uh, Identical or not? So they're non-identical. So they're IVF twins, boy and a girl. Um, and I am very much their wicked uncle. And they absolutely adore everything that I do because they're still young enough not to have figured out that I'm actually quite boring. <laughs> I don't believe so. Just so oh, you just the kids, anyway. there's, a sweet, there's a sweet spot for children. I think it's somewhere between kind of like five and nine when everything you do is just awesome. And you can do no wrong. And I'm I'm in that sweet spot at the moment, so I'm enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> Two questions left. Let's do it. Okay. You like dancing, Jay? Dancing? Yes. Yeah. I do. Um, so I like... So if it's for me in my own time and space or, you know, with my friends or whoever I, I'm, I'm going out with, then I like Latin dancing a lot. Hey. Um, but um, <laughs> my dad actually gave me some, some quite strange but entertaining advice. I think I must have been about 14 or 15. And because uh, I was starting to go out and, I don't know, Meet people and be somewhat playboyish, I suppose. I thought th he kind of saw what was happening. And he gave me two bits of advice. He said the first one is don't 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 get drunk because the hot people never go home with the, the person that's most drunk. And number two, um, especially if you're out and about, people equate people that can dance with people that know how to have sex very well. I, I've heard that before. I've heard that before. Yeah, well. okay. And uh, so I, I, so this is what, nine, mid 90s, early 90s. So I watched Michael Jackson videos on MTV for like three or four months. And, oh. uh, and, and that was, that was me dancing, moonwalking across my, um, my living room as a teenager, thinking, okay, if I finally do this, people are going to want to have sex with me more. There we go. <laughs> Tell me something, growing up as a gay boy, um, did you have the support of your parents, of your family, or for you it was a bit tricky? So, uh, it's, it wasn't something that I brought up with my family. Um, and 
it's not something that uh it's it's never been an issue with they've never, never been that interested in my relationships i think they've okay. kind of i suppose it's a little bit like i think my my parent well certainly my father had guessed about some of the naughty stuff that i've been doing on camera when i was a kid and i suppose the the relationship that we have is a little bit like that which is such as we kind of know what's going on but unless you bring someone home we don't really need to worry about it you've just got our support go and have fun on whatever's going on i suppose so i suppose, I, I guess in that respect i've been quite lucky in that i've just kind of been set free and cut loose in that respect i see all right next question is what is the scariest thing that happened to you scariest thing that happened to me I uh, I had a spell a couple of, a number of times when I was quite young 567 when I would go walk about um and l- lose myself from my family I suppose a little bit one of the the experiences that I do remember so uh we were I think I must have been very young like five or six we were skiing on the mountain and i took the wrong turn and i just suddenly my family were gone and I, they were on one side of the mountain and i was on the other and i didn't know where i was and i realized i'd gone the wrong way and i was trying to climb back up the mountain on my skis <laughs> not really knowing what to do crying into my little bobble hat and all the stuff that you do when you're that age um and uh I spent a whole day looking l- l- trying to look for my family again that day. Um wow. but uh yeah, so that was that was probably scary scary early memory. And that's how the the move home alone started, the idea. Something like that, yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Last question ready? Yep. Do it, let's run. Before the last question, Jay, tell me what's the meaning of life for you? The meaning of life... So the, the consistent thing that's, hap- that's gone through my life is based on actually the, uh, the first ever job that I had when I was 18, um, which was I used to knock on people's doors and sell utility contracts. On the streets of Manchester. It's my first proper job that I ever had. It was a really shit job because it was commission only, it was six days a week, it was unholy hours, it was all of that stupid stuff. But I loved it. And I loved it because it, it, it's a, it's a, a packaged example of a, a lot of experiences in my life which have been about throwing your energy into something and communicating and telling a story or whatever it might be. Um, definitely that moment, that, uh, that moment of uncertainty of what's going to happen, who's going to answer the door. Certainly that's one of those things that I've really enjoyed. Um, and then the last bit of it is um, being good at something and successful and being rewarded for it a little bit. So I suppose that's, That's been something that's consistently gone through my life in terms of I just want to always be knocking on the door and meeting some new people and who knows what who knows what that will bring. And what's the next door that you're going to knock next next one is going to be? I don't know so I'm actually I'm here for a little while now. I'm having a, a bit of a pause from the madness of London. Um and I've just been offered a contract for the ski season. Oh wow. It's going to start in about a month, so D- December when the snow starts to fall. And I it's going to be my first time employed for quite a while, but it's quite lightly leisurely employed. Um just doing like a, a couple of days work at a weekend. Mm-hmm. Um dealing with tourists. Um so English tourists arriving from the UK and difficult french bus drivers we'll see that would be fine so i'm stick i'm doing that for the next six months and i'm actually i'm quite pleased because it's given me a little bit of time and space to 
I suppose, can continue to work on and build on the other projects that I'm doing. So, you know, I'm continuing to get more and more creative as I possibly can about the types of content that I create. Mm -hmm. I'm meeting more and more. This is a perfect example, right? Um, this is the first time we've spoken. Uh, I'm meeting more and more exciting and wonderful people that are, and that's really exhilarating for me uh so yeah that's i suppose that's that's the next six months or so which i'm i'm pretty pleased with okay i can see the open the, the door open now <laughs> <laughs> okay last question is what is the nicest thing a family member has ever done for you nicest thing that a family member has ever done for me Oh, I see. I've been a, I've been independent for quite a long time. I I mean, last day of school, I'm at the house. I'm living my own life. I'm doing my own job and and all of that kind of stuff almost immediately. But um, uh, I I know that both my my dad and I I went off the grid for a little while in my early twenties when I was being maybe a little bit wild and. I know that my dad and my brother just came looking for me uh, wow. around Manchester where I was living at the time. And uh, just one day, been, well, I thought I was hiding, I suppose, a little bit. I was 22 years old, right? I thought I was hiding from the world and doing my own thing. And they were just there one day and said, oh, well, we've not spoken to you for six months. We were really starting to worry. Wow. Yeah, I was, you know, young and stupid and insensitive to the feelings of others you know as can happen um but yes yeah, so i suppose that was that was a really good thing that i underestimated how much you know family family cared for me and how and what lengths they'd go to to, to look out for me oh wow did you get this this um let's see this impression at the time or not just took for a few years for you to realize uh, that it took me a long time for it to really dawn on me like the some of the stuff that i put my folks through not not intentionally but um i, I don't know if anyone else who's got divorced parents has done this but um mm. you'd say to mum, i'm staying at dad's house tonight and then you'd say to dad you're staying at mum's house tonight yeah i was quite i was quite a naughty quite a naughty teenager um so yeah i i don't i didn't do anything really like stupid stupid i, I was never i've never been a huge drinker or but just kind of going off and doing my own thing and just not really le letting anyone know where i was was yeah i was a bit of a habit <laughs> i see okay Right, it's not the end yet. Let's play now the word association game. Okay, I'm going to give away some words. Just tell one word that comes to your mind. Quick thinking. Okay. Start with family. Sorry? Family, one word. Family, love. Money. Greed. Fear. Drawing a blank. Not, not addressing fear, apparently, it seems. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Sex. Aggressive. I was about to say dominant, but it went even more. <laughs> okay. Life. Joy. Love. Cuddles. Aggressive. I was joking. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm not all cold and hot and I'm you know. joking. Just tease me. Okay, so uh, you said um, I, I even got distracted now. Um, Sorry, I, um, sex cuddles was it? Oh yes, yes, great one. Sex and cuddles. So uh, love, and cuddles. love and in cuddles. The love and intimacy and sex and aggression. That makes sense. Got <laughs> <laughs> all connected. Um, politics. Oh, I couldn't get it. <laughs> Friendship. Friendship. Wish it was everlasting. Religion. <laughs> Regrets. None. Okay. Desire. Desire. Freedom. Success. Freedom. One word for wish. 
one wish one wish one Love. word okay happiness content one word for uh for friends friends energy one word for the uk for england island okay <laughs> and if you could one word for um great uh, content creator um, one word um goofy amazing let's pretend i'm going to meet your dad for a coffee and yes. i'm going to ask your dad define jay in one positive word and one negative word only what he would say uh he would say positively i think he would say charming okay. negatively he would say stubborn i'm not that... those two can really go together but apparently they do <laughs> <laughs> if i would ask the same question to your brother it would be the same answer uh i think yeah probably yeah i'm pretty yeah. consistent okay Let's play now, Jay, in the magic box, and you can ask okay. me a question. But, but before you ask me the question, what's your favorite French word? My favorite French word? Yeah. Okay. Well, okay, uh, uh, I'll give you the word, but I was there's a bit of an interesting story that I tell to English people about it. Okay. And the word is busy. Which uh, means? So, well, it can mean two things. Okay. It can mean to kiss. So, as you might kiss your mother, but it can also mean to... uh, that's why I've got French uh, friends and they go bisou bisou. Uh yeah, so that's a bisou is a kiss, but okay. uh, and baiser can be yeah, so a kiss or a... So the lesson within that word is intonation is very important. <laughs> and you could say the same about the word je t'aime, which okay. means both I like you and I love you. Mm, interesting. I love that. Amazing. Yeah. I remember that, okay? In these different occasions, okay? <laughs> so, yes, you've got to be very careful. You don't actually say, uh, come across saying, I love you and I want to fuck you to the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to go to a very difficult direction, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Can you ask me a question now, Jay? Okay. I, I was not... I forgot to prepare for one of these. So, um, what's the question I would ask? So, um, one question. What is... What does your perfect weekend look like? Great question, actually. Great question. You know what? Um, I love movies i love going to the cinema it's my therapy of the week people who knows me very well they go like william which movie did you watch last weekend so i'm you know uh, i'm scorpio scorpio i love my own company as well i love to spend some time with myself i love to you know what i mean to get to you know to to my thoughts on my own but um yeah a, a good weekend for me it's like the autumn as my favorite season of the year you know wake up you know what i mean have something nice go for a coffee walk in the park very simple but i love going to the cinema i think it's my therapy where i forget about the world i forget about what's happening in my life right now so yeah that would be a very good weekend for me when i can just literally take a day to go uh, sorry an, an hour or two hours to go to see a movie and i take from there you know what i mean i think that uh, that's there's the main thing quite, there's something quite special about just kind of shutting the world out and escaping for a little while isn't there It, absolutely, absolutely. It, it's so interesting because it doesn't matter which kind of movie I'm going to watch, but mm -hmm. for those two hours or one hour and a half as mm -hmm. the time when I literally I'm getting into the story and I just forget what's happening out there. It, it's such a, it, it's, it's funny how some things in your life can make you literally disconnect with your, you know, your reality. And for me, movies, in the, the whole experience of the movies, the popcorn or the ice cream or people sitting around and the big scream, That's the whole experience for me. Just makes makes me like very happy at the time when I'm there. Yeah, for sure. 
Oh, I like that. I'm I'm a stickler for no phones and no interruptions when you put a movie on. So there is, yeah, it's quite advantageous to think that this is this is a good bit of disconnect moment as well, right? It's fair enough because you know at home I don't tend to watch movies and uh, you know I like the whole experience of oh, being yeah. out there. So yeah, that's my, you know, my something that makes me happy the weekend for okay. sure. Yeah, I love it. Did you enjoy the week? Did you enjoy the weekend? Did you enjoy the interview, Jay? Yeah, it was great. Thanks yeah, it was again. good fun. I, I wasn't sure what to expect. I didn't have as much time as as I wanted to dig and 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 have. A, I did. I did bring a quote. Yes, I was about to tell you now. First what? of all, thanks, thanks again for taking the time for the interview. Thanks for being okay. so sweet and brings your energy. And yes, please, if you can share a positive uh, quote. So my uh, fun quote, and I'm really hoping that no one else has, has come up with this one before. Um, it's a Tyrion Lannister quote. Okay. Let me give you some advice, bastard. Never forget what you are. The rest of the world will not wear it like armor, and it can never be used to hurt you. Oh, wow. Nice one. No, nobody never said he didn't show over a thousand people. <laughs> <laughs> thanks Maybe. again, Jay. Thank you. Um, thanks again, and I'll see you sometime in London or in France or somewhere in the I world. Will okay. Let you know when I'm back in town, of course. Keep in touch, okay? Take care. Thank you, bye darling. Bye-bye. You too. So, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, first, subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website, www.williamandthemagicbox.com, and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show. And I'll see you there. Bye-bye, see you next time.